there. Do you know, today um, I'm going to answer a question. It's a question that I get asked quite a lot, which is how do you go about making a ukulele solo? Uh, well, there are various stages to it, and in this short video today, uh, I'm going to go through how I would actually go about from a blank canvas to actually completing a piece. Now, I say completing a piece, excuse me, <coughs> completing a piece, um, we're going to take it to a stage. And uh, then uh, I'm going to give you some ideas of where this tune could possibly end up. So this isn't a completed concert performance. This is showing how it's put together, the structure, and then it's up to you how, um, should you wish to, uh, make it your own version. So I'm going to use a piece uh, called um, A Street Where You Live. And to keep it simple, I'm going to just use the, the verse rather than the whole piece, uh, just so I can keep demonstrating the same thing over and over with a recognised melody. So first and foremost, what is the most important thing to do? Well, the first thing is to make it fit. Uh, make it fit, what does that mean? Well, I've only got a limited range of notes on this uke. I always play a G, C, E, A on a wooden uke, uh, and I always have the high G, so. So my lowest note I've got at my disposal is this C here. So if I'm playing a piece that goes below that C, it doesn't really make sense. I'll demonstrate this further. Um, but uh, also it works the other way. Um, I have a whole load of frets here working way up the arm. Up to the 12th fret there and beyond should you wish to. Uh, however, in my opinion, when you're sort of playing chords up here, it gets a little bit sort of thin and squeaky and I prefer, if I can, to be more in this range than right the way up there for playing chords as well. Um, so what I'm going to do then is take the piece, um, as I say, Street Where You Live, and let's, let's pick a key. And uh, the first one that comes to mind is F. Why? I don't know. We're just going to try it. Okay. So what have we got then? There's the chord of F major, and the first note is there. So it fits so far. That's no problem. So... That's okay. Still okay, okay. Now where's it going? Oh hey, look, we're right up <clears throat> on the 12th fret. So maybe that's not the desired key. Uh, it may be better to pick something lower. So let's w go down a few tones and uh, instead of playing in F, let's try B flat, okay? Now straight away I've hit a wall because uh, my lowest note is the C. And I went, bum, bum, I haven't got it. I've only got it an octave higher. So if I was playing in this key, uh, tuned this way, uh, I'd end up swapping octaves. So we got, which doesn't really sound that clever, does it? So uh, that's out. So we've got a, a key that's too high. We've got a key that's too low. Um, <clears throat> let's take it up a tone. So we're now in C, and uh, what can we do with C? Uh, let's try again, exactly the same thing. Okay, so far. <laughs> so my highest note now is 7th fret instead of 12th where it was before. So, that's... Uh, perhaps the best key I've found so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so what can we do then? We need to think about the chords which would accompany the piece. Now I always play by ear and uh, people, some people say how do you do that if it's not written out, it's not in tabs and that. Well I've always been able to pick out uh, by listening to something um, what the chords are or after a, a short period of time. Uh, and the easiest way to explain how I do it is uh, really recognising the difference between uh, the chord sort of sounds. So if we've got a major key, a uh, major chord, we're very happy. It's a sort of happy major sort of sound. And then we go into minors, we've got more of a sort of sad sound. So 
so instantly I can recognize the difference between the major and the minor and then there's some fancy chords that come in like a diminished but it does have a sound all of its own so there's just three shapes just to give an idea of how those chords sound different from one another and there's probably about 30 or 40 which uh, is uh, stored somewhere up here and um, I'm able to actually pick out what they are now that takes a little bit of practice or a lot of practice should I say and uh, I'm waffling now so what I'm going to do is try and put some chords to that melody so if I'm playing in the key of C um, I'll probably just hum along to it so that works made diminished minor seventh Turn around. So, loosely, I've got some chords which I can fit to the melody. So, and this is the fun bit. It's how to get the melody to fit within the chords. Now, as I did the first one, is we got... So, I've got a very important note there to carry in melody. So, and I've, my first chord is C. And I haven't actually got that note within the chord. So I need to find another version of C or something similar to it which would carry that melody note and um, I could do it with a A minor with a C on as well or I prefer to do a C6 which is like that that's 5 4 3 0 if you can't see it so uh, and then it goes um, bum, 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 bum. Now instead of playing back to a C there, I, I like to sometimes replace a C with a C major seventh. So it's a bum bum bum. So just taking that very first phrase. See it's building, isn't it? Yeah. So then diminished. See how it's following it? Ah, now then, I've got to get up here and I can't do it with that there. So I need to work on an inversion of that. There's going to be more about inversions in another video which I'm going to be doing. But just for now, I'll take there. Yeah. Now then. You could say go to the D7th there, but I always like to do ninths. Uh, ninths, for me, add uh, a little bit more sparkle to the piece, so I'll finish there. Which is two, uh, four, two, uh, three. So that phrase. Nice, isn't it, that? Yeah. Okay. Turn around. So we're halfway through. As I say, we're just doing the first section of the piece. Um, so then you've got to decide how are you going to sort of pick it. So we're just going. We've just been going. Okay, which is the chords, but it's not very pretty. So what I try and do is pretty, uh, pretty it up a little bit with um, some little arpeggios and little bounces between strings. I'll show you what I mean. If I'm doing this sort of, so I'm picking three strings in an arpeggio instead of going I'm going so they're following da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum, not all together <clears throat> and the other thing I like to do is bounce so bouncing that means basically bouncing between these two strings or or wherever um, and uh, I'm just making this up basically to give you a demonstration if I take the same chords and the same melody, and I'm just going to put in some little frills and things. This is how it can change from where it was. Okay. Turnaround on. And then an, an end. So 
So we've played it sort of uh, out of time there, but with some arpeggios and some nice little bounces and things as well to pretty it up. Um, but what if you want to then change the, the whole structure of the piece and put it in 3-4? Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3... so on. So that's in 3-4, or you might want to play a sort of a bossa nova, latin -y sort of uh, feel to it, so you've got to sort of... Uh... how I uh, go about putting the piece together then deciding uh, which rhythm I want to actually finish it with. Uh, now I'm going to be doing a series of videos but also if you're interested I'm doing a personal a tuition uh, via Skype and there's going to be a link below and uh, if you click on there uh, you'll notice that uh, in the explanation it says that even if you're a complete beginner and uh, you've just bought your first uke and you want to get started or if you're an intermediate player, you've been playing for a couple of years, uh, you play all the uh, sort of standards, Sloop John B, Folsom Prison Blues, where can you go next? I've got something for you there. And also for sort of more advanced players, uh, we're doing their things into replacing seventh with ninth, to diminish, to augmented, to you name it, all replacement chords and things, and some fancy right hand work as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I haven't waffled too much. And um, I've enjoyed doing it. So uh, until the next time, this is me signing off. Take care. Cheers.